This is my 1889 Singer treadle sewing machine. It's a VS2 and it's got the fiddle base. It's a really neat machine. The decals are very worn but she glides beautifully. I want to show you how to wind a long bobbin on this type of a machine. First of all you put your hand on the wheel to hold it. Now Singer machines when you sew the hand wheel comes towards you. We have to release the stop motion in order to not have the needle operate so we can wind a bobbin. So first I put my hand on the wheel and with my other hand I turn the stop motion screw left as I'm stabilizing the wheel. So turn it left. Now as I pull the wheel now you'll see that the needle is not moving up and down. So we're in a position now to wind a bobbin. The next step is the bobbin winder. This is the bobbin winder and it has a heart-shaped cam. There are tiny little teeth around, around this larger wheel and there are threads on the post. These threads interconnect with these threads to create the movement. Now another thing about bobbin winders is they may run on the treadle belt as this one does. The whole bobbin winder comes forward so now it is in contact with the wheel. As I pull this wheel I'm not, yeah, you can see the belt moving and you can also see the bobbin winder winding. First thing you do is put the spool of thread on the spool pin, run the thread across through the thread guide, and then we're going to wind the bobbin. For this machine, you use a long shuttle and a long bobbin. The long bobbin has points on both ends. One point goes into the cup on the right side and this little tip goes into a little hole there and the spring action is going to hold this in place. First I'm going to go ahead and put this in. It's a little bit tight there. You got to work your fingers in between. Okay, now it's in there. You notice the end. Now if I hold this you can see the spring action. To secure the thread all you have to do is pull this back, secure the end in there. You don't want to put a knot because at the end of when it continues sewing at the end, then it's going to pull, you're going to have a mess. Now you secure or slip the thread through the little notch at the top of this arm and at the bottom there's another little notch. Now you tighten up the thread at the top. So now we have a little bit of tension there. The most important thing to wind a long bobbin is to wind it smooth and snug, not loose and lumpy. So now that we've, we're secure, now that we've got our, our uh, clutch loosened, we're going to go ahead and sew. I like to pinch the thread to add a little tension, otherwise sometimes these bobbin winder arms will, it will end up winding too loose. What happens if your thread is wound very loose, the top thread ends up falling into the previous layers and as you're sewing and it has to jerk free you end up with a loop on the bottom of your sewing. So uh, I add a little tension by, by uh, pinching the thread. I'm going to go ahead and start treadling. You'll see the arm. Okay. Can you see the arm? It's moving across. I'm pinching this a little bit. It's winding back and forth. See the heart-shaped cam? There's a little arm. Well, this is the arm, but it's like a little puzzle piece here, and it's rolling around this heart-shaped cam. Anyway, it's just continuing, and it winds left to right. Sometimes these need a little adjustment. If it ends up packing up at one or piling up at one end, you can even wind it without using using this. I'll show you how to do that without 
say I'm going to, I could actually guide it from above if I release it from that little arm and I'm holding my thread up here, I'm going to just wind across back and forth slowly trying to see I'm bypassing that arm. The arm's still moving but I'm showing you if your arm is not working properly sometimes they need a little adjustment but um, I'm winding the, the bobbin as smoothly as I can winding it back and forth and you never want to overwind a bobbin because it's got to fit in the shuttle and the thread has to be free. I'm going to go ahead and stop. Now I'm going to pull left to release the spring and pull out my my wound bobbin. Okay, after I release my bobbin, I can clip my thread. Now, now you see I have that little tail that I had tucked into the cup. Now I'm just going to get very tight in there and clip that off because I don't want that in there. And we've got a bobbin that's wound smoothly. My next video will be how to insert the bobbin into the long shuttle.